everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, this is Be Better Golf Live. I'm here with Monty Sheinblum, who uh, is a touring pro right now. He's officially. <laughs> officially, because uh, I guess you have two events in a row, and now you're really on the tour. Well, Not you know, on the PGA Tour, but. Well, you know, I, yeah. I, I pretty much have not played golf for myself in, you know, seven or eight years. And, uh, you know, I played in the Long Beach Open the week before last. Now I'm playing in the Golden State Tour event. And after doing nothing but being on the golf course, giving playing lessons for five or six years, yep. you know, it's it's really, you know, the first, these are the first rounds of golf I've played where I've actually tried to, sh I mean, I even haven't had fun rounds where I was doing, it was, I was out giving a lesson to somebody. So, you know, it's a, it's a strange and, and awesome experience to, to be doing this again. Let's stand on this side of the line just so our live viewers can hear us a little better. Also, it's got to make you a better teacher too, I would think. Well, sure, yeah. you know, I mean, Anytime you learn about the game, you, you're going to be able to teach better. Right. You know, um, seeing all the, you know, I get to learn from my mistakes, not only to make my own game better, but make everybody else's game better. Mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do. I mean, most of what I teach is not what I just invented out of thin air. It's mm -hmm. stuff that I've observed in good players. Yeah. Knowing some of the mistakes that I made, you know, and, uh, you know, speed, expediting other people's processes yeah, right. and getting better, you know, where, mm -hmm. you know, don't do what I do, you know, don't do what I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving on to the uh, tomorrow morning, which is, uh, if you guys are watching this on YouTube, it's probably today, is uh, the first round of Olympic golf in 118 years or something. What are you expecting from Olympic golf? Do you think it'll be a big deal? Um, Here's what I think the intent is. This is just my two cents. Is you know, especially like uh, you know Russia and a lot of the Eastern European countries, and uh, okay, it, they want to be good at something if it's in the Olympics. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. China and you know all the other Asian nations, they're they're in that boat as well. Yep. but they're already into mm -hmm. golf. Yeah, and I think this is just it, it's 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 a marketing scheme for like I, I hate using that word because scheme sounds negative right. it's just it's marketing the sport to other countries where it hasn't caught on yet and I, I'd be willing to bet that if golf stays in the Olympics that we'll see good Russian golfers within the next 10 years yeah in other countries that really the the Olympic thing is giving it more credence and more like okay yeah. this is something we want to concentrate on but I, I don't think it's like mm -hmm. you know People aren't gonna, you know, win the gold. Mm -hmm. And plus, you know, I was just gonna say, I have a gold medal in golf. Who cares? But you know, there's something about, you know, that, that's why everybody gets so fired up for the Ryder Cup. Yeah. Because you're playing yeah. for your country. Okay. And then uh, Monty has been playing. Uh, so let's. Uh, you're in a tournament now. Yes. So tell us a little bit about how you played today without us having to search on the internet. You, you know. It, it was really funny. During I shot 74 in the first round of the Long Beach Open, yeah. and that was a miracle because of how <laughs> because of how awful I was. Yeah. Today I shot 74 again, and it was the exact opposite. I was actually fairly competent most of the day. Yeah. The putts weren't. I must have I must have missed 10 or 12 putts in like the six to 18 foot range. Yeah. And you know I kind of limped into 17 even par. I just missed about a seven footer for birdie on the 16th hole. And I'm like, all right, you know, this has been an okay day. And I kind of lost focus and whipped it out of bounds on 17. And I'm just like, you know. Yeah, right. And I'm just like, that, that, was, right. that was pretty pretty dumb to lose focus that late in the day. Yep. And so I shot 74 and again, it's not very good. I, I, I'm not trying to put a positive spin on a poor round. Yeah. It's all about, I'm getting back into tournament golf for the first time in almost 10 years, eight years. 2008 mm -hmm. was really the last time I played any kind of real yep. tournament golf. Mm -hmm. And each time I go out, I learn something. And today, you know, Starting to feel more and more confident as you tee it up or? You know what? I was awful on the first hole today. I made just a horrendous bogey on the first hole, which you and I have discussed before. Yeah. My bogey percentage on the first hole is over 50%. Right. Like if you took your handicap of just first holes in tournaments oh, over I'm the 18. last 10 years. I'm, I'm right. like a 15 handicap. <laughs> yeah, right. right? But, right. But after the first hole, you know, no one's going to confuse me with, with, uh, with uh, you know, a, a tour player winning a major. But it's gradually shaping up into something that I can work with. Mm -hmm. Because look, let's be honest here. You know, the people that watch the first two rounds of the Long Beach Open, everybody knows I can hit it far, even though I was driving it really poorly. Uh -huh. 
I have the ability to hit all these fun shots that we have out here. Yeah. And during the Long Beach Open, I showed that I could pitch the ball well and make putts. Yes. So now it's just about, you know, kind of getting more comfortable and making the sum, you know, the mm. sum of the parts isn't very good right now. Yeah. Each individual part is, is decent, yeah. but the sum of the parts is, is mm -hmm. just, you know, mm -hmm. So, so far I've got three rounds, 74, 69, 74. So that's one over par for three rounds. Yeah. You know, that's not gonna cut. Yeah. That's not gonna cut it. Yeah. So I just have to be a little bit sharper, um, you know, men when I say sharper mentally, it's not that, you know, I get mad or, it's just, I, just, I tend to lose focus being out there for five hours. Yes, yeah. And, you know, the shot that I hit on 17, that I hit out of bounds, it. There's just, if I was in the moment, there's no way I'd ever hit that shot. Yeah. I just kind of, what you said was kind of true. I was a little bit kind of, eh, I missed another putt, you know. Yeah. And people were making comments that I looked like I was getting down on myself and I had bi bad body language. And I didn't give away any shots during that tournament, tournament due to that. Yeah. Whereas today, I did in fact make that mistake. Oh, okay. After missing yet another birdie putt, I kind of was standing on the tee, kind of going. He didn't I, give it the full effort. Yeah. I, you know, I, Monty, what were you thinking on the tee? I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. To hit, if you saw the shot that I hit, blank. You know, yeah. I could have hit it 90 yards left mm -hmm. and had wedge into the green, and I did a really good job of that at El Dorado. I was missing it in the yeah. right place, so I would. This one, I hit it, and it wasn't close. It started out of bounds with a cut with the wind blowing left to mm -hmm. left to right. Mm -hmm. So it was 40 yards out of bounds and just a total mental error. And I know you guys are probably excited to actually see some of this golf. Uh, if Monty does make the cut, I think I'll have some time to go out and film some of it uh, this week on this thing called the Golden State Tour. We'll see. Uh, John, what's our next question? Uh, someone's asking, what are your thoughts on a forward press? Uh, he feels like when he does a forward press, it helps him get his arms lifted sooner. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This is a very, very personal question because I used to have a really, really pronounced forward press. Okay. Yeah. And the unanimous decision of everybody, instructors, friends, fans, yeah. other players, you got to get rid of that. That's it's not no good. You. Yeah. And as soon as I got rid of it, my game went. It, it was my trigger. It ruined the rhythm of my swing and, yeah. and how I got my arms into position. And ironically enough, in the last year, I've started to throw it back in. I mean, I used to have a pronounced one. I used to go, you know, yeah. and, and it helped me kind of get like, moving. Okay, this is what we're doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, so to answer the question, it's one of those kind of things where if it, if it, if it helps you and it's not create like the, these unique moves as long as it doesn't put you in a bad position and it helps you link things up and get your body moving and helps with your rhythm it's a great thing you know I, I hate always being the guy that's people really don't my students all hate it mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a it depends yeah of course you know yeah, I yeah. always say that yeah because golf is such an individual sport and you know the Jim Furyk you know, yeah. if you asked me, is this a good takeaway, Monty? I'd be like, that's awful takeaway. Mm -hmm. yeah. That takeaway just shot 58. Right. So, yeah. you know, that's why you, as an instructor, qualif you're not hedging when you're qualifying. Yeah. You're, you're making sure it's clear to the person that, right. generally speaking, yes, however, you know. The one thing I do notice with a lot of, uh, it's more in the beginners, though, and uh, that, you know, I don't see like a ton of really good players with a lot of, I'm not talking about a forward press and then back, I'm just talking about like setting up like That's this. That's no good. Yeah, and I see a lot of beginners, they, they're, they're set up to the ball like about that. Right. With all this angle. Yeah, well. And I see a lot more good players like basically stood up. You want your arms up. hanging. You want yeah. your arms hanging. And to put this extra ness in is yeah, 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 that's no good. Someone's asking for drills on draining more short putts. Okay. Okay. They're, they're missing a lot of putts. If you're missing short putts, there's, here are the, here's the checklist. Obviously you have to make sure you're aligned at the intended line. Yeah. Okay, that's the number one issue. Mm -hmm. People that are missing short putts, okay, I got a right edge putt and they're aimed left of the hole. Yeah. You're gonna have some, pro you're gonna have some issues. Second thing is 
people say, oh, keep your head down, don't look up. That's not quite right. Yeah. What you don't want is the chest to come up. Because Lorena Ochoa did a pretty good job looking up every single putt, right. but it but went right in. See, it's, so you, know, you see, some people will even look at the hole when they putt. It's this that's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the chest comes up. Mm -hmm. And then kind of going along the same lines, you don't want any hip rotation. Right. The, mm -hmm. Those are the three biggies, mm -hmm. people yeah. that miss short putts. Mm -hmm. They're just not aligned correctly, number one. Number two, their chest comes up as they're coming through the ball. It's fine if you go yeah. like this, but it's that mm -hmm. and then hip rotation. Drills wise, I think the for me, what's helped me because I used to have a problem with short putts, I'm very good at it now. But uh, if you go to any PGA Tour event, without a doubt, the training aid that you see more than any other training aid is that Pell's putting tutor thing. Uh, I know you have some experience with Dave Pels, I think, but this thing uh, is its very expensive for what it is, just a piece of plastic and two marbles. It's like $50, but it really gets your putts more started online. I right. think it's, it's, it's good to, you know, to, to me, practice. To me, that, that has more benefit as an alignment device yeah. than an actual once you hit the putt device. Yeah, don't even worry too much about like setting it up and to, to see it go in the hole. Just get it started through that little gate. Right. And see that, you know, if you have a line on your putter that it's, it's lined up with that line that's on the thing. Yeah. Something I really want to get into that uh, it's just really hard to find people who do this is putter fittings. Like I know that some companies will fit you to the kind of alignment that you use and other things like that. See, that's why this yeah. this directed force putter that I'm force putter mm -hmm. that I'm using is uh, is awesome because they have it, it's a really really simple fitting tool. Yeah. You know, you can adjust the lie angle and you can adjust the length with a little Allen wrench. Okay. And basically, they just say, okay, get set up comfortably with your arms the way you want them, and then they just put the thing in your hands and they adjust the two things. And then they yell over. You know, 70, 34 and a half. Okay. And they just do it there and you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, guys, if you're interested in this directed force putter, your clubs aren't here, right? No. No. If you guys are interested in this directed force putter, uh, there's a promo code here to get $50 off of it. That is only good for this month of August. So uh, check it out. It will be a, a link in the description. I think it's called Devor 50 is the name of the promo. And uh, it's a good discount on a, it's, it's got some very interesting technology. Just watch the video for it. Uh, what's next, John? We'll do about two more. I'm peering my irons, but topping and thinning fairway woods, any suggestions? Yeah, you gotta get your right shoulder forward. Okay. It's really that mm -hmm. simple. Yeah. You know, the, the, here's the problem. So a lot of people are like doing that. I'm gonna tell a yeah. quick story, personal mm -hmm. story. And this, it's these big headed drivers. Okay. Okay. When the first big-headed driver came out to Titleist, okay, yeah, they they handed it to me, and I was hitting it all over the place, mm -hmm. and I started adjusting, adjusting, adjusting until I could hit it straight. Yeah. Then they handed me the new three wood, and I topped the first three. It's because these big-headed drivers, in your brain, they make you want to go like this to help them up in the air because it doesn't look like they have much loft. Yeah, and that right shoulder drops. And you know, whereas an iron, you're like, oh, I'm gonna hit down on an iron. So then, you know, you get that right shoulder forward, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, I need to hit up five. That's what everybody says, which is, as you know, is nonsense. Yeah. But, well, it's not nonsense. It's not nonsense. But the idea of trying to get there, let me right. hit up. The, <laughs> phys the yeah, physics right. say that hitting up five with X amount of this and X amount of that, yeah. that's the optimum. Mm -hmm. that, but when you start trying to hit up five, you get in this position, the right shoulder drops, and you know, there's, there's a lot of tops involved. So just always be thinking that this right shoulder, if, if you put like a little sticker on your right shoulder, it's always gonna be making forward progress. Right. It's never gonna be here and see how now it's not making any forward progress, and then it's, right. so. You know, th this is what you want. It's real simple. You want some out, you want some down. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you obviously, you know, the over-the-top people have too much out. Yeah. The people that are underneath and hit hooks and are hitting tops have too much down. Yeah. So you want, you know, the proper, you know, meshing. Hit one for us, Monty. With a little out and a little down. That's really good. 
Okay, last question, and then uh, we'll do a little wrap up. Uh, give us a good one, John. Uh, there's actually a couple people asking about they're sliding too much on the downswing, and they need some drills to. This is that. huge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is this is a big a big problem. You know, there's a lot of this. Drive the lower body. You know about that, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. I also and, know about right. getting over here. Yeah. Okay. So there's a really really good drill that you obviously can overdo, but it's the one that gets you kind of learning what more of this move is, is you just take a little swing and you feel your tailbone go backwards, okay? So okay. I'm gonna force everybody to stare at my giant behind here. All right. So when everybody thinks that the tailbone goes forward, but that's a big slide, if you watch, this hip will move laterally, but the tailbone actually either stays in place or actually goes backwards. So you can see my left hip went forward, but my tailbone is not. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. I don't, know if, I don't know if we can hear you uh, on, on the, mic, on okay. the, on the uh, cell phone. Here. Okay, on the cell phone. So you can see my left hip is going to go forward and shift into the left side, so to yeah. speak. But you'll see the seam on my shorts really doesn't go forward that much. So whereas yeah. that's a big mm -hmm. slide. So if you can feel the seam on your shorts go backwards, that's, yeah. that, that's, that's a good drill to prevent the slide. I'm gonna try that, because I do slide a little. Switch spots with me, Monty. Okay, so the feeling is here, and then it's like this a little bit. Right. Okay. And I, see, I try to stay away from things that can be overdone, but if it's just an exaggeration drill, See, there was no slide on that one. No, it, it felt a little different. I, I was like, whoa, what, where am I? Right. I was like, okay. Right. But, but lower body felt good. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you want the left hip go. It, th this is what, I mean, measuring with 3D devices, four inches is the number. Okay. So, like, some people will go two inches toward the target. As far as where, where it's set up, it's here at zero. The pelvis. And then by the time there's impact, it's gone a net of four, four inches. inches. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, you know, that's not four inches. No. That's like eight or ten, mm -hmm. you know? So you just have to be, you just don't want your tailbone moving, you know, too far forward. So is there a drill, because that's more of a feeling as far as keeping that tailbone feel like it's moving backwards. Is there kind of a drill where we could use some kind of prop to help us with the sliding I mean, a little bit? You know, you can put, you can take a, you know, stick a, a, an alignment stick through a pool noodle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And put it back there, obviously. So if I'm here and. So, you know, okay, yeah. it, it, the, the alignment stick will be stuck in the ground. Yeah. And then you put the pool noodle like four inches this way, and then you swing without hitting it. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're just trying to. And you really feel. Uh, one thing that we did uh, that after using the. I forget the name of it, the, pr the pressure mat. What's the name? Yes, body track. Body track. After using the body track, you could see, because I slide too, that the, the track, the way ball, too long. was going way too long. So you had me go here, and I was feeling like my left toe was coming off the ground that's, that's, at impact, you know. You know, the feels that could combat a negative move are, I mean, they're almost right. infinite. Yeah, yeah. Okay? You just have to be careful with exaggeration drills. Okay, right. You know, you always want to have either someone and say, look, this is what I want to see, or more like have your iPad or your cell phone up on there and yeah. make sure it's really, because what happens is, is hypothetically, you're sliding, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And you do the, Monty said, move my tailbone backwards, and you flush the first four balls, Yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. Sweet, I'm just gonna go to the course and move my tailbone backwards. Well, guess what? Two weeks later, you're gonna be swinging like this. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so that's why you gotta be careful. You gotta, mo you gotta, consistently monitor when you're doing an exaggeration drill. Yeah, that feedback is huge to not overdo it. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for watching. This was uh, a lot of fun. Monty, good luck with your round tomorrow. Thank you. We'll be uh, paying attention. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. So long. Bye. I don't understand the idea of maintaining that right wrist angle like this yeah. because if you were tossing a ball, you wouldn't toss like that.
okay, I didn't explain this well enough. I, I want the weight of the club to act on the right wrist, both back and through. It's a drill, it's a feel. It teaches you how to not narrow the hand path okay. your first move down. Y you literally can't execute it better than that. Yeah. I came in shallow, I didn't have much shaft lean, I, I engaged the bounce, I did everything I was trying to do. Hey everybody, on Be Better Golf right now, you can see this video that Monty and I did. Monty gave me a lesson about pitching because as you've seen in some of my vlogs, it's the weakest part of my game. But I really think soon it's gonna be a strength and something that I really enjoy doing. Well, you weren't struggling much because after you got the lesson, you beat me in a pitching contest. And a game of horse. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, and it's something, it, it's a move that is really uh, just it's totally- It's universal. It's universal. It's good for, good for anybody to try it. So try it out. And I really think the information that we had in my lesson is gonna be valuable for everybody. So uh, pitching prescription, check it out.